You just got paid. Time to splurge, right? Well, not so fast. You need to pay yourself first so your money works for you and not someone else. In today's video, I'm going to show you five steps to budget your paycheck so you know exactly what to do when you get paid. My name is Marco and I'm super excited to be working with NerdWallet and their YouTube channel. If you don't know me, I've been making finance videos on my own channel, Whiteboard Finance, for over six years now. You can expect to see more of me here at NerdWallet breaking down a broad range of finance topics, but enough about me, let's get started. One of the biggest mistakes that people make is not paying themselves first and before they know it, their entire paycheck has already gone to other things other than themselves and building their own wealth. So I told you this video would be about five steps, but let's start with step zero. Yes, step zero. Before we can do anything with our paycheck, we need to get a baseline understanding of how much money we have coming in versus how much money is going out. Here's you, you worked all week and it's Friday. You get your paycheck, you're happy, you have money coming in, and then you also have money going out. So this could be for a multiple uh, different things. This could be for food, uh, it could be groceries, this could be for car payments, bills, et cetera, et cetera. So there's many different ways to do this, but here at NerdWallet, we have a free app. Use this app to track your income and expenses to get a better understanding of how much money is coming in versus how much is going out. So step number one is contributing to an employer match if you have one. So this could be something like a 401k, a 403b, or a Roth 401k, or some sort of other tax advantage retirement plan. The reason that this is step number one is that most of you will have some sort of match, essentially free money, up to a certain percentage of what you can contribute, which we'll get to here. Many employers match a portion of the employee's contributions up to a certain dollar amount or percentage. So for example, if you make $100,000 a year, your employer may match up to 100% of your contributions up to 6% of your salary. This is why it's smart to contribute at least up to the max of what your employer matches. So 6% of $100,000 is six grand. Your employer is giving you six grand. You're contributing six grand. Six plus six is twelve thousand dollars. So you're essentially getting an additional six thousand dollars towards your retirement for free, while simultaneously lowering your taxable income by six thousand dollars because a traditional 401k is tax advantaged. Step number two is paying off high interest rate debt. So what is considered high interest rate debt? Well, the logical question is to ask yourself, what else or what kind of return could I get with that money instead of paying down that debt? So remember, paying off debt is just a tax-free, risk-free, guaranteed rate of return, okay? So for the sake of this video, it isn't technically a return since you aren't getting anything back by paying off that debt, but you're getting that interest rate back. It's a good frame of mind to use because you're eliminating that interest rate obligation. So if you have a credit card that's charging you 25%, by paying off that debt, you're making a guaranteed 25% by eliminating that debt from your life. I would take that return all day long and invest every single penny I have into something that was a guaranteed 25% ROI. So I consider anything above 7% to be high interest rate debt. Uh, that's this bullet point right here at the time of this recording, uh, because that's a very healthy return on investment with literally zero risk or taxable event. Um, if I could promise you 7% in stocks or 7% guaranteed, I would take the guaranteed route, and that's by paying off this debt right here. So the reason you wanna pay off high interest rate debt is because it compounds. Compound interest works both ways. It can work for you or against you, okay? So if you bought a PlayStation, for example, with a bunch of video games and controllers totaling $1,000, for example, and you put that on a super high interest rate credit card, that $1,000 PlayStation could easily become multiples more over time if you're just making the minimum payments and never reducing the actual principal of your debt. So constantly keeping high debt in your life will be one of the biggest roadblocks to building wealth, and this is why this is step number two. Okay, step number three is to build your emergency fund. I could have maybe put this as step number two, but the fact that paying off debt is a guaranteed rate of return, the math and finance nerd in me simply couldn't pass that up. So building out your emergency fund should start with a small attainable number that you are comfortable with. Think like 500 to a thousand dollars, right? So once you graduate from there, I would try to be anywhere between three to six months of living expenses. If you're single, three months is most likely fine. If you have a family, I'd lean more towards six months. Uh, if you're an entrepreneur or have a hundred percent sales commission role, uh, or a small business owner, I lean more towards 12 months, okay? So I know this sounds super conservative, but if we went through a period of 2008 all over again, people were losing jobs left and right, and unemployment was almost 10%. Having an emergency fund allows you to create an insurance policy on yourself, and it gives you a strong foundation on which to build wealth. 
So this is why these three steps in order are in the order in which they are, uh, because having too much cash in an inflationary environment is a losing proposition. However, when it comes to emergency reserves, uh, this is almost a non-negotiable in my opinion. So once you do reach that three to six months, you need to start investing for retirement and overall wealth building, which we'll get into in step number four. Okay, step four is investing for retirement. Yes, we touched on investing in your 401k up to your employer's match in step number one, but this is where we're gonna take uh, your retirement savings to the next level right here, okay? You should responsibly be putting away 10 to 15% of your net income into retirement. That's why I have net highlighted right here. Notice how I said net. I don't like working off gross numbers because it's not a realistic scenario after taxes. So for easy numbers, if you net $100,000 in a year, at least 10,000 of this, 10 to 15,000 of this uh, should be going towards retirement. This is where I like to incorporate the Roth IRA as well. Uh, the reason I like the Roth IRA is because it's uh, incredibly flexible and you're contributing to it with after tax dollars. This allows whatever investment you have in the Roth IRA to grow tax free. So upon retirement, you won't have to pay any Anything on the growth within this account. Uh, at the time of this recording, you're able to contribute up to $7,000 a year in a Roth IRA, $8,000 if you are 50 or older. The rest should then go into your employer's tax advantaged account, in my opinion. And that's where we go to the uh, filling up the buckets portion of this video, which is actually my favorite part of the video. Okay, step number five is to fill up your buckets. This is the bucket system. So I could have taken this video to the next level by talking about paying off low interest rate debt, prepaying college for your future children if you decide to have them and other things like that. However, for most people, step five is where we can stay disciplined uh, using the bucket system and actually enjoying our life with the money that we make. So after steps one through four uh, are completed, you will hopefully have enough money left over for expenses, which you should have a good understanding of how much these expenses are because you're using the the nerd wallet app and then you should be paying them off responsibly so after completing steps one through four and also paying all your monthly living expenses let's say you're consistently able to save one thousand dollars a month okay you would then start to funnel these thousand dollars into different buckets so these buckets are essentially just different savings accounts investments accounts cds bonds it's completely up to you but i prefer to keep this in an easily accessible liquid account you can use a high yield savings account for example so your buckets can be whatever you want them to be, but here's the five buckets that my wife and I use in our personal lives. So bucket one is savings. So this is basically savings and emergency, which we discussed in step number three. Uh, bucket two is investing. Uh, bucket three is a house fund. So if anything goes wrong with our house, like maintenance or upgrades or whatever, we have money in that bucket. Uh, bucket four is a car fund. Uh, if we either wanna put a significant down payment on a car or pay a car with cash um, or repairs for a car that comes out of here. And then bucket five for us, travel is very important. So your priorities may be different. Uh, you can see this uh, from this nerd wallet survey that the most common priorities are actually emergency funds, uh, investing, retirement planning, travel, holiday savings, and education. 8% of people actually have no financial priorities uh, based on this survey. So whatever your buckets are, uh, you should automatically be filling up these buckets based on your leftover savings every week or every month. You're able to do this easily uh, and most savings accounts and brokerages, they, they actually have a process where you can set this up or um, you can actually just set up multiple different savings accounts. That's what my wife and I do. So the money's taken directly from your checking account or wherever you get your paycheck to and it's paying yourself first. This is not only super easy and automated, but it also tells you what you can and cannot afford depending on how much money is in the bucket. So if you look at your car fund, for example, you know you can either afford a Toyota Yaris or a Porsche Cayenne, okay? So this is both incredibly humbling and also incredibly disciplined, which will prevent you from living beyond your means. So if you look at your travel fund, you'll quickly be able to tell if you can afford that trip overseas or just a trip to the local zoo, for example. So it works for all ends of the spectrum, and that's why I really like it. Hopefully you now have a better idea of what to do with your paycheck. Hopefully you're a paycheck pro at this point. Uh, again, I'll be working with NerdWallet for this foreseeable future, and I'm excited to do so. Uh, as always, hit the like button, subscribe, hit the bell, and then stay tuned for our next videos. Thank you so much for watching.